Leg 14 of the Moors Millions is next. This is the longer distance one. And even this one's not all that long. Really. It's only three miles and seven furlongs. So sub four mile. 0 to 120 again. And presumably the ones in this one can fit into either the 3 5 or the 4 3 final. It's Law Society Graham Clutterbuck at the top. Avon Pants, David Robertson. Plava Laguna, Padre Hogan. Triumph Spitfires, Matt Cooper. Nicholas Silva, Martin Edom. Garouche, Padre Hogan. France, or France, for more Matt Cooper. And Paul Satilla, more Alex Cherry. Iron Racing. Just a small field, as you'd probably expect. They've got quite a few long distance races this week. They get into the first of the 25. They're all safely over it. And Padre Hogan is top and tail in the field at the moment with Plava Laguna and Garouche. It's Plava Laguna who's got the lead. Leading by two. And Avon Pants in second. They get to the second. If they all get over okay. Over number three. The electric fence is still turned off. I wonder why they only had it on for the hurdlers. Maybe because the hurdle, of course, is close to the electric fence they want to stop them escaping I don't know but you can see it's turned off no electric bits they're over the fourth which is a ditch and it's Prava Laguna who's in the lead on Avon Pants in second then France and Trump Spitfires together and the Law Society and Pulsar Tiller Garus has made some good ground and now the only grain in the field Nicholas Silva who one or two of you might have expected to see at Aintree this week is the back marker I expected him to beat, but he was too far out of the handicap. To the fifth. We'll save the over the fifth. Plava Laguna. And Avon Pants are still the one two. And over the sixth safely as well. Plava Laguna clear of Avon Pants and Pulsar Tiller on the inside of the Matt Cooper pair of France and Trump Spitfires. And the second of Padre and Hogan's horses, Garus. Law Society and Nicholas Silva. Over the seventh they go. We'll save for the other one. That'll be the final fence in two more circuits time. They've got to go around twice more yet. And Plava Laguna is the leader. Four lengths or so to even pants for David Rawson in second. Paul Sotilla down was near rail is third. And except for that leader, there's only three lengths between first and last, or second and last. As they go, oh, there's a fall there, it's Trump Spitfire's gone. So, Trump Spitfire's is out. Hopefully, for Matt Cooper, it's already qualified. And it's Plava Laguna in front. I know Stu was of the opinion a year or two ago that once you'd qualified for the final, you shouldn't have to, you shouldn't be allowed to run in another qualifier. Maybe we get more people qualifying because the qualifying spots were being taken up by horses who didn't need them because they'd already qualified. I can see the point of that, but the downside to it is that these sort of races you probably only have three runners in by now because I think quite a few of these are already qualified. Some of the fields would get small, then just about everything would qualify, and what would be the point? Anyway, over the 11th we go. My personal opinion on the Moors Millions is that it needs a bit of a revamp. Because it is, in a lot of ways, the cause of the problems at the Grand National. I saw a comment in the forum today where I think Josh might have thought I was having a pop at him for running his horses in the Grand National. I certainly wasn't having a pop at him for running his horses in the Grand National, nor was I doing it at Leon Van Rensburg either. It's not their fault that their horses are so high in the handicap they put everybody else out. They enter those horses into the league to be their national horses. We know that. We know that Josh does it because he calls them national. So the point I'm always making is that we've got such a fictitious programme. I'm going to put this in a post in the, in the, in the forum so that most people can see it. It's because we've got such a fictitious program for the four mile division. It doesn't 
actually pan out in real life properly because it doesn't matter what you think about things in the Grand National. This is why the Grand National in real life now is going to be so different in the future to what it's been in the past because now it's just another long distance handicap. It's all about speed as much as anything else and you're going to get class horses. It's not going to be long before you get a horse that wins the Gold Cup in the Grand National in the same season. And it's not going to be long before, heaven forbid this does happen, you get a horse that wins the Grand National first and then goes and wins the Gold Cup later. The fact of the matter is, those four mile races in the Grand National in particular, they were for a specific type of horse. And that specific type of horse, although they become everybody's favourites, they've got one thing in common. They are slow and they are not fast enough very often to win anywhere else or any other races other than four miles. Yeah, Red Rum won the Scottish Grand National, but he only did it once, didn't he, when he was seven or whatever he was. It's... In real life, they don't run every week over four miles. They don't get the opportunity to get put up to 150, and they run in three and a quarter mile handicaps and three and a half mile handicaps where they don't win, they don't go higher and handicap and all that sort of stuff. So that's the problem, is that in real life you don't get 150, 160 rated horses running over four miles, and that's what we've got to do different. Over it we go. We've got to completely revamp the four mile thing and get rid of all those group one four mile races, make them handicaps. Ban them maybe so that they've got lower rated in some of them, higher rated in others. But more importantly, change the silly handicapping rule. Because once you get to three mile, five furlong, I think three and a half mile should be the cut off. If you've got a three mile, four furlong handicap, sort of distance rating, if you like, whatever they call it, a distance marker of three and a half miles, that should qualify you to running everything over that distance. Whether it's four and a half miles, four miles, or three and a half miles. And the same with a flat two mile should be the cut off point there as well and you can go in anything you like aboard because that would just make more sense. But anyway, back to this one. And Plava Laguna is over it in front on Pulsatilla second. And Nicholas Silver is third, Law Society is fourth. In comes Avon Pants and Garus. Trump Spitfires is the one that's fallen. But it's Plava Laguna is well clear. Pulsatilla second, Eamon Pants is third, Francis fourth, then Law Society and Nicholas Silver. We've gone the leader, he's been going so well and he stood so far off that he gave himself no chance at all and has crashed out. So Plava Laguna is out and Avon Pants is now the leader with just two to get over and two furlongs to go. It's Avon Pants from Pulsatilla and France. This is the second last. Then after that comes Law Society and Nicholas Silver. Garus is the back marker. They've got a furlong and a half to go. Heading down towards the final fence. Can David Robertson get some sort of consolation for coming second in yesterday's Grand National by winning this one? Looks like Alex Cherry's got something to say about that. Pulsatilla battling back on the inside then. It's the final fence now, but it's a better jump by Avon Pants, and Avon Pants has gone on. Pulsatilla is trying to close. France is back in third, but it's Avon Pants that wins it. Pulsatilla second, France third, Law Society fourth, then Garus, and then Nicholas Silva was last. And Avon Pants takes it. Oh, David Robertson. Second was Pulsatilla. Or Alex Cherry. Third was France. For Matt Cooper. Fourth was Law Society for Graham Clutterbuck and fifth was Garus for Padre Hogan. <laughs>